Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome back to Sundance 2019. This is the IMDb studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, it's the director and the cast of Velvet Buzzsaw. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've seen this trailer and holy f uh, It looks incredible, man. Take us into it. What is the movie about? The movie is a satirical thriller set in the world of LA contemporary art. And it's got a Robert Altman sort of ensemble cast that we follow through it. Good call, man. I didn't realize that. Oh, but a big I watched the trailer. Fan. It is Huge a little Altman fan. It's a little bit player, a little bit MASH, a little bit Nashville. Nice DNA. And I love the way he took like a, a big cast and followed a story through these interlocking stories. And I, you know, I got Jake, I got Renee, I got Billy, Zowie, Natalia, I got David. We we have David Diggs, Tom Sturge. I managed to get a lot of people involved who are Tony great Collette. talents. Tony, Tony Collette, Collette, who's not here right now. Huge but, cast. Yeah. Why the art world? What, what? Malkovich. Malkovich yeah, just yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. him in the yeah. trailer. Malkovich <laughs> has in this Thank movie. you so much. <laughs> Malkovich is going to have a hell of a career. He's the up and coming guy. And I think, I think, I think really, I predict stuff. good things for John Malkovich. Interesting choices. Yeah. Why uh, art world? You know, I was, in a, I was in a contemporary art museum one day, a couple days after Christmas a few years ago, and it was like closing and it was freaky and weird. And I thought this would be a great place for a horror movie. I always wanted to do one, never had the vehicle for it. And I like to put ideas and themes that are important to me. And, and the art world is a world that's off its axis. You know, it was supposed to, it was originally started to provoke and challenge. It's become utterly co-opted by business and big money. Mm. And it's just an interesting sort of conflict that you can mine for a thriller. We're a thriller more than a horror movie. You always go for weird, interesting places and whatnot. What is that? Why won't you do obvious shit? <laughs> you know, I like to, if, if something's been done before, I avoid it like the plague. Right? I like to lift up a rock and just see what's scurrying around underneath. Not in a moral way. It's not, I don't want to judge anything. I like to look at them. I like ecosystems and microcosms and just studying them and getting to know them. And it's just, I like the research part of it too. Is that familiar? Writings in your family is all over the place. Brothers, that, that your brother, your dad. Is that, is that something that one's, like my dad never told me anything except see that mountain, never climb it. You know, so like, <laughs> did you have someone who was like, you know, writing is a way out of this. My life. dad would say, not climb that mountain. He would say, if you're gonna be a writer, never bore. Don't that's, bore people. That's great advice, man. <laughs> that's the one rule that I've taken to heart. It's like, that's the one thing in art you can't do. I mean, you can do it if you know you're never gonna like reach a mass audience, and that's fine. If if it's just for yourself, God bless. Right. But 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 uh, yeah, my father was a writer, and I grew up with variety in the house and talking story. My brother Tony's a writer. I'm a writer. Yeah. It's good thoughts, man. The uh, you two, we were talking about right before we went. Um, Free Jack is a movie I paid cash money to see in a theater. So the only Sorry. one. I, I was there by Kevin myself. Kevin was the only person who actually paid to see Free Jack. <laughs> but that you wrote, you were in it, and that's where you guys met, and you've been together ever since. How adorable is that? Isn't it yeah, adorable? It's just adorable? It really <laughs> is, man. No, I'm lucky. Are you kidding? It paid off for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's I, the story? I, How did you guys meet? Well, I know Danny turned the, 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 oh God, that's mean. I probably shouldn't say no, this. No, I'm not gonna say it. Go ahead, you can. Okay. Look, we sort of didn't want to do Free Jack because right. the script sucked. <laughs> right. And so three times they, you know, they actually started the film and finally the third time, they said, well, I'm gonna pay you this. I went, Okay, but I have to meet with this shitty writer because it's like, he's so horrible. So I was not I, the original writer. No, I, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. So anyway, I walked in and he was there. I was really sweet about it. And then I found out, of course, he, he didn't write it at all. And he'd turned the movie down three times as well. But it ended up fine. I mean, there's no, no diss to Free Jack or anything. Whatsoever. But the best thing yeah. that came out of it. How sure. do you keep a marriage together this long in this business? Most people don't. We've been divorced three times. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, was that the case? We're actually separated right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, sir, I like her. That's, that's how we keep it together. I like her. Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, elaborate. And he writes parts for me. That's basically that's it. That's the big key. Like, I wouldn't what be I'm getting saying. these parts, believe me. No, you know me, what I like so. about her? She's wild. Mm -hmm. And it's what I like about everybody here. They're, all, they're, they're wild creative spirits. I like, I like creativity. I like people who are wild. I like people who are passionate. She's passionate. I'll always be attracted to passion. Mm. The, uh, this is a Netflix thing. Did I read that other people wanted to make it and Netflix beat everybody out? There was a bidding situation? Yeah, there was a lot of people, there were not a lot, there were a number of people who wanted to make it, but Netflix was the one who, who gave us the money to make it the way we wanted to make it. And I think that's emblematic of what's going on right now in the business. I think there's a, a quite a number of interesting projects, Roma and other films that, that, are, that probably would have trouble finding homes. You know, a black and white film in Spanish is not the first choice of some studios. Right. So that Netflix, God bless them, is in the artist business. And, and I have nothing but praise for, for, for Ted Sarandos and Scott Stuber and everybody at Netflix. They are, they, are, they are writing history right now, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. 
And this is, uh, you guys are following uh, Bird Box. Yeah. Uh, this looks like it could be the next one that kind of breaks out for them. Well, we have the same blindfold thing in our movie, <laughs> which I feel like we're a little behind the curve on that. But, but, but yeah, no, I'd love, I'd love to have, Bird Box was huge. I'd love to be, have any part of that. The trailer reaction was massive online. You guys owned Twitter for like a day when it went up. We did. We, yeah, we did. It's, it's a batshit crazy trailer. It really is. Uh, you, I've been seeing everywhere, sir. Was it like jumping into this flick? Uh, yeah, just a great opportunity again. Like when you hear like Dan Gilroy once put you in a movie, you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll show up. Um, yeah, it's just again a great opportunity, and I'm grateful to be a part of it. And he's so funny. I'm sorry, I just have to say, <laughs> you're oh, funny. they're all so damn funny. No, I'm not, but they are really funny. This is the first time you've been up here. Or you've been up here before. I've been uh, to Sundance before, but not at this capacity. I've always had to like. Like hi, uh, what is this thing? Hitchhike to get to, to the right. road. Now Here's I, somebody actually the drove you up to got, the Yeah, I got a ride. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, I'm just thrilled to be here. Generally, I feel like the slight competition winner in this cast. Like <laughs> when you see the lineup of everyone and then me. It's I like, saw the trailer. Oh, no, no, no. Nice no for them way. to invite. You know no that. Way. Poor girl, along to joy. Um, no, look, I mean, I did an audition tape for this film, and I and I read a few scenes. I didn't even read the whole script, and it was instantly one of the most visceral, fun, weird, interesting feelings I'd had when reading something. And I laid the tape down and watched it back, and thought, "You look insane," but I think it's gonna work. <laughs> and I got I got cast. Yeah, I feel same as Billy, really lucky. How does one prepare for a movie like this? Do you delve into the art world yourself, or no? Yeah, I did. It was actually something that I was really interested in doing, just because it, it feels like not like any other world you can really compare. It's not like the fashion world or the acting world. It's so intense and, and brutal in a way that other industries aren't. Um, so I spoke to some people who worked at galleries, some gallery owners, and then one of the best things about doing the film is we shot nearly exclusively in downtown LA, and there's some How intense awesome is that? galleries and studios, and people are setting up on their own and putting galleries above little, like, I don't know, former gyms and warehouses. So I just saturated myself um, and had a great time. Saw some, saw some weird. Shit. <laughs> in downtown LA? Yeah. And not, not just Zoe in the gallery. a very big part in the film. <laughs> <laughs> very substantial part trailer, in the film. Yeah. And, and she's and with she's some killing. heavy hitters, and she uh, nobody blows her off the screen, let me tell you. She's the big talent. I, I didn't Huge. win a competition. I, I, legit, I legit got I, I would just like okay? to say, and she writes and directs, and, and yeah. wait, just wait. Everyone's yeah, she, gonna. Zawi's gonna be here in the near future as a writer director. You'll be I'm back on your own yeah. stuff, under your own steam, as yeah. they say. My well new done. managers, everyone, thank uh, you. Really, high yeah. praise, 10% right here. <laughs> What about you? Stranger things have happened to you. What's, uh, what's, <laughs> thank you. Hey, my pun game is strong. What, uh, how is this movie for you? Um, yeah, I mean, very similar in the sense where, you know, it all starts with getting a, I mean, obviously Dan, having Dan's name, it's just like, yes, automatically. <laughs> but, you know, reading the scripts, scripts tend to speak for themselves, and it was, you know, such a great, read and the characters really jumped off the page and you're yeah you just sign me up please whatever you need so shooting yeah. in LA which is something you'd mentioned man that's for those out there watching most people think movies Hollywood yeah. nobody makes movies in Los Angeles like you usually have to leave Los Angeles because you're looking for a rebate or something like that but it smells like Netflix is like just take all the money and stay in Los Angeles yeah look I love shooting in LA I live there I fall, I'm a New Yorker, but I fell in love with L.A. Mm. It's raw, it's uncivilized, it's wild. And you know what's interesting, and you know it as a filmmaker too, there's so many talented crew people who come from L.A., but travel around. So when you say you're making a movie in L.A., you get this great pool of talent. And goes, oh, I want to see my family. I've had people on my set who are going like, this is the first movie I've made in L.A. in eight years, and I live here. Right. Often, you know. So you get this great talent pool. People want to go back to L.A. L.A. is a great place to make a film. And location scouting? Throw a stick, you're gonna find a great location. And, and also, in a world where you're uh, setting the movie in the art world, it's like, why not be there, for heaven's sakes? Why yeah, fake LA, it else, LA is right at the cutting edge of contemporary art right now. Traction Avenue and everything that's going on downtown, it is really, they're writing, they're writing it, yeah. Um, is it an easy world to make fun of? It seems like kind of like set up payoff in that world, but then you took it elsewhere. When I started watching the trailer, I was like, all right, I think where I know where this is going, and then I was like, oh, I had no idea where this is going at all. <laughs> You know, I wasn't trying to make fun of them per se. I was trying to actually use, capture it as accurately as possible. Mm. I like to let characters reveal themselves. 
in a world of big money, it's a little bit like mad, 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 mad world. When people are chasing money, they become funny inherently. Right. And everybody in the movie is chasing money. And actually, Mad, 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 Mad World is one of my favorite films, by the way. Uh, Did it play a part? Is it in the DNA? It's, at all? It isn't my DNA. It was my first film that I ever saw, and I've never sort of gotten it out of my system. But, it, but I've always been intrigued with people chasing money. People become very funny when their economic well-being is online. They become really sad and, 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 and tragic, but they also can become funny. And I think that happened in this film. You were writing for years before you started directing your it stuff. Was. <clears throat> was the whole time, did you know one day I'm going to aggregate to directing? No, I never wanted to direct. I really didn't. I'm, I consider myself a writer, and I like being alone in a room writing. Uh, but I watched Tony, my brother Tony, directed Michael Clayton, and I suddenly realized, whoa, like you can control your own stuff. And as a writer-director, which you are, That's you know, dream, suddenly right? you go... Oh my God! These thousand decisions that get made every day. I want to be a part of them. And once I realized I could do that, it's just you can't. As a writer director, you can't really go back. It's, it's tough hard. to go backwards yeah. because suddenly at that point you're like, oh, I can protect the words from here all the way on. Exactly. What did you find while directing that it was different from the world of writing? Like, did you walk into it going like, oh, I know how to write, I know how to direct, or was it two different hats you have to wear? The hardest part for me about directing is is I've never been leading people. I've never been in charge of people looking at 200 people looking at you going like, what are we doing today? Mm -hmm. And I, you, you find who you are. You like how you, how, how you inspire or lead or tell people what to do. So finding that balance of just me realizing I wanted everybody to, I wanted to collaborate. I wanted to create a spirit of collaboration. I didn't want to be autocratic. I didn't want to come and say, this is what we're doing. He's awesome as a director. I just I want to say, I'm just going to put out that Dan, you're phenomenal. Amazing. Enjoyable working with and anyone you collaborate with is... And, and you watch the film and it's so weird and it's so dark and, and behind the scenes there's just so much joy and so much love and support and, yeah. and kindness coming from, from Dan and uh, I just feel actors, crew, the whole, the whole team was so, so stoked to be working with him. What is it like having a buzzy film? You enter this festival with like one of the buzziest films. And it's, and you what all, could go wrong? Yes. <laughs> you also don't have the pressure too of like a lot of films come in they're like, man, I hope we sell. You, you've got a home and stuff. So it's a rarefied position to come into this festival and just be like, boy, I hope they like it and have no fears beyond that. I think I speak for all of us. We made a film that we're proud of. There's, 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 there's our themes and ideas in here about art and artists and following your passion. I stand by that. I will die by that. I want people to like the film, but I like that it's out there saying what it's saying, and that to me is the most important thing. Fantastic. We got this winter hat here, man. What we do is we fill it with questions. We ask you to pull one out. And then everybody answer this question. Oh, God. Oh, God. You, you ask it. Oh, no. Okay. But I just want to point out for the record what an amazing actress Renee is. She literally acted surprised, like, <laughs> this is going to be fun. That was fantastic. What a performance. Here we go. Describe in great detail your first kiss. Oh, that's not the question. Never. Uh, I was so there. I was like, go. Okay, the question is, if you could star in a biopic, about anybody, who would it be? Oh, well, I guess we'll go down the line this way. Happily. You well start. directed. You uh, start. Just what came to he my he mind. Um, I would, Robin Williams, honestly. Nice, Paul. Wow. Yeah, yeah and you could, I could see that, man. Yeah. Do you have a very hairy chest? That was No, no, I'm not. <laughs> we could work on that, you know, CG and shit. But that's a good pull. That's yeah. good. Uh, Prince? But I think nice. I, I, fear, yes. I fear I'm too tall. Is the only you thing, do have him by a couple the only feet. Thing holding me back. But from, bold choice. From that. Thank you. I'd see that movie. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't either. Tammy Faye Baker. Yes. No. 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 Tammy Faye. No. I don't know. <laughs> You're like yes. I don't know who that is. Uh, think about it. We'll come back to you. Lucille Ball. Into the microphone, or else we can't. Yes. Yes. Lucille Ball. Excellent Lucy Lucy. Call. Lucy. 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 Two generations of Lucy. <laughs> very, very cool. What about you? Uh, I'd like to be Charlie Kaufman in the Charlie Kaufman story because I, I really revere him as a writer. Oh, my God. I really do. You're adorable, man. <laughs> you're, you're so about the art and whatnot. Um, what happens after that? I know this is the worst question in the world because you spend so much time making something, putting your heart into it, and you're like, ta-da, and then people are like, great, what's next? But what is next? I'm, re I'm ready to move on. I think we all are. I, I like to think that we're all going to move on to things that challenge us and provoke us and provoke everybody and challenge us and, and break new boundaries. And I just want to go to places that hopefully haven't been explored too much. As a comic book guy, I saw something about a Stan Lee thing. 
I worked with Stan on, on a, I did. I did a project called Annihilator. I, I worked very closely with him for a year, about five years ago. And, and it, the loveliest freaking dude in the world. You, you met him. He was great. The politest, nicest, chillest dude, considering all the financial, legal things that he had to go through. That surrounded him. But uh, God, did I love Stan Lee. And it was really sad to see him go. I, awesome dude. Yeah. yeah. It was really, it, what was nice about being mm -hmm. around the guys, you got aside from the grandpa, uh, uncle vibe of like, oh, he's been doing this for a long time. You met a lot of people in this business who were inspired by him as a kid, reading yeah. his characters, who like grew up, became titans of this business, yeah. and everybody kind of bent a knee uh, to the dude, man. The fact that you got to spend some time with him was very, oh. very cool. A great sense of humor. Very funny guy, Oh my right? God, he was a funny guy. There's who you could play in a biopic, Stan Lee, Stan Lee. man. Yes. You Bring could pull that off. Peter of the Marvel, the MCU. <laughs> right there. Here we go. Here we go. Give it up for the folks of Velvet Buzzsaw, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>